Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Polina here talking to you a little bit about this new moon happening on the 16th of August and right now it's the 11th of August so we've got some time, we've got about five days to really get ahead. Um, I'm not sure if you guys heard about the Lion's Gate. So apparently some people think it was on the 8th. I don't usually believe in this stuff but I definitely felt something and I wouldn't say that it's true. <clears throat> because I don't go by numerology, but I definitely did feel a shift. Did you, by chance, feel a shift on the 8th of the 8th? Um, I definitely have. Uh, so maybe there is like a very, very nice, uh, strong belonging or a strong center. The fixed sign of Leo has to now really make sense. Things have to become stern, strong, heavy, dense. It's like a very good uh, cake, you know, like moist and dense and sweet and rich. So that's basically what we're going for uh, during this time. If you can imagine, Cancer was the batter and now Leo is the cake. Uh, Leo is a full glow, it is a full bloom. I mean, if you can imagine sunflowers and roses and everything fabulous, everything meaningful and everything uh, rich and stable. So it is about uh, wealth. It is about uh, also this grace, it is about flair, it's about art. So this part of uh, the year is definitely going to bring all that stagnation and temperamental stuff to an end for quite a lot of people. And there's going to be a no-nonsense clarity. And there's also going to be an eagerness to change things. And uh, for some people, uh, rabbit here is still providing a little bit of neurosis and a little bit of like, uh oh, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? People tiptoe and they feel like they're walking on eggshells in some ways. But then for a lot of other people, there is a definite design, there is a center of gravity, and there is a consciousness that is kicking in during this time that is like, yes, this, how, why, and all of that is just going to become very clear what for, how, why, form, function, the purpose, the point. Um, so not for every single person, of course, but for um, a majority of people, there's going to be a real gift or a real surfacing of at least a truth or a fact. And if you're really struggling during this time, this means that you have been looking at things unwisely or you've been following a trail that is not your trail. Maybe you've been following a sound or a smell or a feeling that has nothing to do with you. Maybe you've been eluded as we do have Lilith close to the sun. So anybody who is also in the world of addiction and obsession and um, any kind of uh, debilitation or negativity and people that are going around in circles, uh, they're going to have to perfect those circles or they have to get out of these circles. So it's also about groups of friends and feelings and karmas we have towards one another. And I definitely have to say that certain people are just walking a trail that other people have paved for them. So for example, you might be repeating actions or movements of another person in your life, or you might be going the way that society has kind of made you go, or you've been following people that are leading you around the bend, as they say. So also we do have an incredible trine between Jupiter and Uranus. Uh, in Taurus, then there is also Mars, Mercury in Virgo, uh, with Sapo and Pallas there as well. And we do have a retrograde uh, Pluto also up there in the last degrees of Capricorn as he is in retrograde. So he dipped his toes into Aquarius and then he came back to Capricorn. So what does this mean to me? This is a gift. This is structure. This is certainty. This is ability. And this is also divine judgment and divine timing. And in certain people's cases, it is about realness. It is about culture. It's about cutting in. It's about competitiveness. It's about competition. It's about cutting that short, you know, the process short. It's like walking in in front of other people sometimes. Um, cutting and putting in um, your worth, your words, your ideas first and wanting you to succeed beyond other people or wanting your children or your projects go first and quickest. So this is like um, really hard um, for certain people that have been waiting around too long. They didn't understand. They didn't see the forest for the trees. Also people that gave up on a really good place they once had and now have to return back home. So there is going to be a kind of dud feeling like, oh my god, I already met that person and I already fell in love with this person, but like I thought it wasn't it and I had to walk around and do a little dance and then eventually, you know, it comes back.
the feelings come back so you already know like wow that was my love you know for example could be that you have done a course of study that was really good but then you felt disheartened and you did all these little jobs and you didn't think you'd go anywhere you'd get anywhere but then you come back to that original course of study and going actually hell no I'm not letting go of my dream I'm going towards the, the best I'm going towards the epic life that I really really want to live and such so in some cases there's also a comforting level of uh, going backwards for example um, a person in their late 20s having to come back home or even in their 40s having to come back home and live in their parents house for a while because they had it really good um, next to their family they they had a really really good uh, energy or really good message in their um, original environment so also people shifting back previous jobs maybe after years of karma realizing they made a mistake after years of searching after years of misguidance um, recognizing that they haven't actually been able to really face themselves or see the full potential of their life or they made things overly complicated like they were in denial that's really important uh, like a person that was in denial for example no 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 I'm not doing this I'm not doing this this is not what I'm doing then eventually having to go back to square one and having to do what they were doing before so this is not um, something that we need to feel bad about um, basically what rabbit does by this point is works out all the different fractals all the different signifiers it works out all the different nuances of one's life and now has come to a really legitimate wholeness you know so um, even if you've done your best years ago and this is hard for me, I suppose. It's for many people that are really searching and trying to do their darndest and um, kind of like making things up and making a form of progress in their life rather than, you know, keeping at that level. Um, it's really, really hard to see sometimes that your pieces that you've lost along the path were great. Uh, for example, being in love with somebody who was completely 100% correct for you. And then now having to recognize that you kind of like, oh, oh, you know, like mixed and mingled and tried to run away when you're now coming back to the point. And it's kind of like a proof as to why um, nature has designed it uh, this way, why you fell in love with that person in the first place, why you had to stay there. So, for example, why you didn't have to leave your previous job. This is one of those very, very hard things for me. But in some people's cases, that's a really cool truth. It's like, oh, wait, I already have that treasure. I already have stacks of books in my house. I already have all the right recipes. I have all the right medicines. I have all the right words. So in some cases, <clears throat> it's just a big yay because um, not everything has to be redesigned and recreated as Rabbit did want us or does want us still to kind of take another look is this the best place? Is this the best path? Rabbit year is about having a critical process, you know, having a critical eye for things, having to define things maybe um, all over again in order to get yourself right. So it's about correctness and about clarity. And yeah, sure, in some cases it is about going back to square one. It is about going back to that uh, failed degree. It is about uh, claiming that space you've already claimed, maybe even as a 16-year-old person, something that I'm doing today, actually, it's interesting. Um, maybe you've already meant it, you've already said it, maybe some of your best work is in the past. And now that has to really um, see itself through. Now, this is really, really hard um, in certain cases to actually recognize that you've already done it and you left it or you didn't think about it or you discounted it so um, going back to the best years going back to those best places and in some cases yeah saying thank you and I'm sorry please forgive me I love you you know um, maybe for some people it is about growing up all over again and going back over their life going back over their path and this is probably one of the best um, advices <laughs> pieces of advice I have for this particular time maybe you've already done it maybe you've already got it maybe you've already got those gems and those pearls it's just a little bit hard to understand because um, it seems like it's in the past so I would here not discount any lost or loss um, energies uh, because Lilith is also about loss and losing and mystery and things being in shroud and also we have Neptune across from Mars Mercury so 
Neptune is in a very, very interesting, auspicious place. Um, he's in retrograde, but he's going to be next to Fortune during this time. Fortune is a great signifier of ease and good karma. So you see, we have Neptune in the last degrees of Pisces. It is getting to this gate between the no world and this world. You know, so it's like the never and always, you know, this very interesting ascendant point. And then on the other side, of course, we have Mars and uh, Mercury, which can be a little bit neurotic. But what I'm kind of seeing for, for you guys, for some of you guys, also with this Mars being at a beautiful trine uh, between Jupiter, Uranus conjunction and Neptune, um, we're going to have a, uh, not sorry, not Neptune, Pluto, thank you, between Jupiter, Uranus and Pluto. There you go. Um, we're going to have a very, very tempting time to actually recognize where we were and who we are today. It's very interesting, it's very naive and also very powerful as to how life will bring it up to you and what you will be presented with. And it's not for all people, it's not for uh, all time, but um, in certain cases, yeah, we really, really need to regret and we also need to come back to those spaces that were beautiful and holy for us before. Coming back maybe to that person that actually meant for you the world before, or going backwards to those ideas and beliefs, as some of it is just waiting for you, and it is wide open, and though it might feel like you're setting yourself up, or setting yourself back, um, there is something very magical about recognizing these different gems and pearls, and roses and blooms of the past, and having full-hearted appreciation. And the heart doesn't lie, although so we do have Lilith close to the sun is just about the occult parts of the heart and that's really really hard you know sometimes like you have a moralistic perspective where you have like this very very bright world view and then your heart um, says something else because your heart is a uh, product I suppose of a long path of lives it's not just about you, it's also about your demographics, it's about your life, it's about your country, it's about your people, it's also about your ancestry and your path as a soul. You know, so here is the thing, it's like some of the time we look at, say, the Christian perspective or the modern perspective and um, all these different perspectives in between and beyond. Um, we don't really know ourselves sometimes, but the heart just can't help and feel and um, this is really big for rebellion and rebellious behavior. And I'm not telling you guys to necessarily have fights, but yeah, sometimes a fight will at least break you free or break you loose from these um, hours of thinking or hours of going the wrong way. So like how to really recognize where you need to be and who you are. So the time, the time is right. Um, time is very, very important. Um, we really, really have to get to know you. Uh, we really, really have to understand uh, where you really, really believe you should be because there's a faith riddled um, uh, Saturn there. It's all about faith. And he's uh, very neatly there um, in between this uh, Pluto and Neptune uh, sextile. So it's like retrograde, all retrograde, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune. And yes, uh, Saturn is balancing out um, these two perfectly almost. So he's trying to get to know you. Uh, life is telling you to really share, maybe even overshare, and to be exact about who you are and what you're really feeling. So this is the time for growth. This is a time for a center. This is a time for real uh, responsibilities and real beauty and real peace. And those real, not necessarily like the big human truths yet, because I don't think anybody's really fully ready for that yet. It's just the big full um, exposure or like the big full commitment to certain parts of you, even if it is just an inside commitment, it's an internal, personal, private, and even dream time commitment, it's better than if there was no commitment at all. So what I'm saying is, um, it is very, very important to um, get to know yourself and other people around you and to be really crystal clear now and not to have this kind of dawdling about um, which is what um, a lot of people probably um, would inevitably have years of, uh, years and years, you know, of dawdling about uh, being here, being there, kind of blinking, looking, feeling, not knowing what dream they're in and not really caring which dream they're in and not feeling like the main character or even the supporting character, um, just not feeling like anybody. So this is the worst, the worst part of Lilith, Moon, Sun, Venus uh, combination that we have in Leo, it's the worst. And also Juno is uh, a little way behind, you know, so feeling kind of like stuck like a young little person 
uh, or like still unable or still not fully respected person feeling like you're half cut or feeling that you're not fully understood so it's kind of like I'm not really sure did I do the homework did I like the imposter syndrome basically uh, here it is uh, kicking in for certain people did I did I really walk into the right place am I meant to be here there's not a lot people can do for you here at some point um, so this is not like a very scary or very bad energy, but um, in some cases, um, nobody can make you feel good about who you are and what you're doing. Nobody can push you into place unless you do it yourself. So here's where some people are really skyrocketing others, and sometimes there is a fight. So activating of other people, it's like somebody like smacks another person down just to give them some boost, to give them some power. So this is a very awkward and in a way, shallow way, how people might give advice. It might be through a grunt. It might be through a push or shove. It might be through some um, very weird also network of friends. I mean, it's actually an okay thing to be passed on or to be passed over to another person. It's like, I can't help you here, but look, I have five of, five of my friends that can help you, but like, I got to go and do something else. It's also not a bad feeling. It's just a little bit abrupt and not very well as to what people are to each other and how they're treating each other underneath the surface, especially if you can imagine somebody smiling at you, but underneath they're like, ah, oh, I hope I never get to, you know, do this again, or ah, I don't want to service this person. So having ungrateful staff members, having, having to be also ungrateful yourself, it's like, oh my gosh, I want to do a thousand things now, and this person is dawdling around now this is very very bad and this can uh, lead to a lot of psychosis especially if you have um, a lot of fragility in your family in your home and then one of the people or more than one of the people is like ah get out of my way you know so all of these different parts uh, of the picture are not working and uh, they're not helping each other so if people are like uh, very competitive especially in the home and domestic environment or they're not giving you like any clues to where you belong what you need to do you have to sometimes do it by yourself you have to see it through by yourself there is nothing wrong with having alone time if people are shoving and pushing and you feel like you're in a crowd even though you're just between four or five friends and nobody gets to see or nobody's listening or nobody's learning anything from you and there is like a force that is not um, helpful uh, there is a need to still be grateful and respectful of this and start to sort of see your own energy or your own gems and quite a lot of people I know um, have a feeling of being uh, underpaid, undercut, you know, underdone, not respected, especially by the elders and their parents and the general world views or public views and ideas. It's like, well, nobody's got anything to give me. Well, you know, I'm kind of the underdog in the situation. So we got to basically try to blueprint you out of this. If you're feeling like you're an incredible underdog or if life is constantly stacking its odds against you or people are not conscious of you or they're not respectful of you, also, we do have Chiron North Node, Eris, Eris's confidence um, and blatant need to be somewhere. So also this is an Aries, of course. Uh, Eris has been there for a while and uh, Chiron is there and North Node is there and they're all in retrograde. So maybe something that you really, really want to be a part of, you could have, should have, would have done before. And that's really, really hard because this is also kind of actually at a trine. To the sun stellium so this is really really hard for certain people for certain cultures um, it's going to be very very hard and enormously like bad and kind of unhealthy for some people to um, clear the way and try to get uh, along try to get across unless you are really like cheesy and emotional or you're an incredible expert or you are just bountiful um, a bountiful person, a bountiful personality, a lot of zaniness, all a very, very real expertise, level of expertise or confidence and cockiness is needed. So also you see Humia, the planet of the child, is next to the south node in the last degrees of Libra. Now what does this tell me? Children are forgotten. Sometimes a person that is like um, a little bit lazy or a little bit on kind of like the softer side and um, they want to learn from other people might not need um, or might not get that push but how they might learn is through uh, really really weird experiences like somebody pushes them somebody just shoves them into a place or somebody forgets forgets them you know it's like it's a very very weird way that the 
consciousness now is working because Leo is usually about children and it's about the gifts and it's about being, being the child and sometimes having children as gifts. But now it's like, look, we're not learning here. Um, I want you to go like sit by yourself. Just just go sit in front of the computer. Mommy got to do something else. Or Daddy got to do something else. So like um, sometimes people get big, uh, sorry, uh, backbenched or uh, um, backbenched or kind of shoved places and that's not actually necessarily a bad thing we just have to stop fixating like but mommy but daddy but please help me like please help me won't probably work things out unless you really have good friends and family so there are certain people yeah we are blessed some people are really blessed also count your blessings now really have a look um some people are very, very obvious and open about where these blessings are, and they should be. Make it a strong time. Make this a strong month. Um, it's very, very important for certain people to recognize uh, where their country has their back, where the schooling system or the governments have their back, where somebody has their back. Try to see who you can rely on and maybe go towards that um, if you're still learning or if you're still quite unsure and unstable. And instability and being unsure is a big part of Leo, but we have no time. We have no time, you guys. So there's like a very, very big emotional um, escalation. And it looks like um, it's kind of like we have to go. Like So maybe it's like run for your life. That could also be uh, something that this moon implies. It could also mean it's now or never. It can also, uh, may, it can also mean uh, you have to do it now. Uh, or it can also mean, look, it's either this or this. Now you have to go either th this or that, this or that way. Um, it's very pushy. Pluto, as I said earlier, is at a trying to quick Mercury, Mars, and also Jupiter uh, and Uranus and Taurus. Th these are all passive kind of signs because it's all Earth signs. So they're kind of nice and mellow, but um, I wouldn't... Uh, think that there is no decision that needs to be made you have to think about it no 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 this is quick it's like call to action here or there cut and dry are you there are you here which way are you gonna go so let's talk a little bit more about this other aspect which is this torturing emotional Lilith next to the Sun now this is not an aspect that many people know about and um, not many astrologists like to talk about it because it is just so hidden and nobody really understands it so uh, let's break this down we still have a few minutes because I usually do my half hour here <laughs> sorry so if you already bored but let's let's do this okay so um, Lilith is next to the Sun Venus and Moon. You see, this is very feminine. Juno is very close also. Very feminine, very slinky, very sensual, very seductive. Um, there is no point to it unless it makes you feel very incredible or romantic. Sometimes you can't help these feelings. It's either like, ah, oh, like pouring through you like oil, or it's not giving you anything and this is very very hard for some people what if those sensual sexy seductive emotional things are about the wrong thing for example um, what if your lust is uh, getting the better of you or what if you feel an incredible emotional romantic or seductive pull towards something or somebody that's not part of the game it's like I don't want to have feelings for a married man or like, I don't want to go where like those bad people are. I don't want to like, for example, spend my life smoking pot or doing drugs. I don't want to do that. You know, there is also another part. And this is the crazy thing is that you can't help it. You can't help it. So quite a lot of things uh, at the moment are going to be like a helpless feeling like, I don't know what to do. I'm a, like, this could be a very big conundrum. For example, you're a mother of four children. And suddenly you fall in love with a neighbor. This is an example. And there's nothing you can do. Every time you look at this person, your face flushes red. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You keep on biting your nails, getting very nervous. And like say you, your small baby is only like a year old. Uh, or not even, a few months old. And you still can't believe it. You are still with your husband. You're still with your children. You have your family. You have your home. You have all of those things you earned and you work so hard for. And all of a sudden, there is this person, this prince that lives next door. Now, um, I will tell you how to get rid of it. Now, it's not about getting rid of it. Um, it's just about like um, recognizing that you can't help it, but don't look at this person in a dirty or demeaning way. So, for example, if you have a lot of 
uh, Christian heritage or, I don't know, Muslim heritage, any kind of spiritual religious dogma behind you, if you have a lot of um, very good upbringing as well, if you have beautiful parents that just wanted you to get married, have kids, and just have yourself a life, and if you've done everything and anything everybody has ever wanted, now is a very interesting way that the culprit comes in and it feels like, oh, why me? It feels very dramatic. So this is what Lilith does. Why me? Why does it have to be me? You know, and then like the dark night of the soul, you know, feeling like a shadow being, feeling uh, dirty or unwelcomed or feeling like there is a dirty little secret. Now, the best way you can see it is that there is a big part of you inside of this feeling. There is a big part of who you are inside of that. Yes, the dogma or like certain types of religious or spiritual teachings or even social morals will not stand for it. And you don't have to necessarily at all uh, go towards the other end. Like, I'm going to be a polyamorous mother of four, you know, even though my husband is completely 100% dependent on me and doesn't want to see me with another man, you know. So all of these really, really crazy things, they can happen. They can pop up like really, really scary, crazy things. Also disease, like also state of humiliation, Lilith can pop up like, for example, incredible bouts of acne, um, incredible breakouts, sweat, smell, um, anything under the surface. It's like, but what about me? You know, but what about this? What about that? You know, so the body's kind of rebelling a little bit. Um, the better way to do it is to regress in a part of you that has always wanted something that you never got. So for example, you always wanted to be with a prince, but now you are with a hobbit. And you have four children with him. Maybe you've given up on yourself in your 20s and you thought, yeah, I'll just do the hobbity life. When you were always imagining that you'd be uh, next to an angel. And it just so happens that, for example, your next door neighbor looks, I don't know, like uh, Leo DiCaprio or something like that. You know. So like this is a very, very interesting uh, thing. It's really, really volatile uh, time also to think about this. So I don't want to like push any buttons by accident. I'll just say this. We have a lot to learn from these animal selves and from these instinctual feelings and amazing kind of uh, miracle sentiments that are coming through because inside of this is a real part of who you are and it, is, and it isn't about making a decision. So in some cases, yeah, this could actually lead to like a breakup of a marriage or completely like moving away or a complete change of heart. Uranus is next to Jupiter, a total change. Like a complete change. Also, fortune is next to Neptune. So yeah, you know, the, the world of fresh starts, you know, fortune is going over the ascendant here. Um, complete change in your life. Complete change in your nervous system. A total, completely different worldview. That is really possible and obvious and very good. And everything is saying, now, 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 Pluto at a trine to both Uranus, Jupiter, and to Mars, uh, Mercury, of course. Quick, 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 cut it, cut it, do it, do it, do it. And in some cases, yeah, uh, Lilith is quick to judge. And a lot of this emotional, uh, romantic stuff can actually lead to like a total hurt, left behind, crazy thing, or just a like complete garbage story, like, 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 a, like a bad story that you don't necessarily want to ever imagine. It's like you don't want to imagine yourself in the story. Um, but then, yeah, so these dramas, they can sometimes be one of the most healing experience you'll go through because maybe you don't have any time to do it any other way. You don't have any time to do it any better. You don't have any time to prepare your children, your husband, your house, your, your, your presence is not prepared. Maybe things are not enough. It's just like nothing is enough and it's like oh help me god and sometimes things have uh, to happen sometimes there are fires sometimes there's catharsis sometimes there is a weird string along situation that ends up in your husband discovering your text messages for example this could be a very very bad feeling um in this like cooking inside this and for why do we have catharsis why do we have some abrupt endings and very very um comfortable beginnings is simple because we were not prepared. We didn't want to do things the right way. We've been waiting too long. We've been suppressing ourselves. We've been trying to be a good person. We were trying to be nice. We were trying to be friendly. We were trying to hold back. And then this 
And sometimes it's ugly. And in some cases, it can be very beautiful and very potent and very real. What can be very easily achieved is just how things happen sometimes is not how you would have put it together. So in terms of starting new projects, okay, uh, it's already almost 30 minutes, but let's do this. Um, if you're still with me, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, in terms of uh, starting new projects, uh, because new moons are about starting new projects on Lilith, Lilith and Venus. Well, the thing is, Venus, Moon, Sun, and Leo is a gift. But then there's Lilith in there, you see? <laughs> starting new projects. Okay, so this is the one that you probably will want to do for the rest of your life. Very easy to be uh, in love with somebody now who is just like completely enmeshed into you not knowing how that happens so quickly. Um, very easy to start off uh, with somebody also that won't be there for you later, but it will still be a lingering memory for many years to come. Also, for example, you could be in a certain project that just takes over you. Also, things can be contaminating and take over your body. So, for example, um, I've been working with clay and I've noticed I'm getting certain types of funguses in my hands. In my hands. And as you know, I'm like very, very intense about detoxing and stuff. And uh, this could potentially lead me to having that forever. You know, so you've got to be careful. You've got to be very clean. You've got to really, really understand. And you've got to really, really take it to the next level. Yeah, so I have to maybe have like, for example, working with clay and then having hand baths, like intense hand baths for like half an hour after every session of working with clay. Great idea. So like maybe um, you have to have something like that. You have to change. Uh, contamination is at its worst. Um, also clicky things, things that are viral, things that stick, um, people you meet and you can't remember yourself without them, uh, dependency, vampirism, and also an obsession is likely. So for example, you start painting during this time and you can't help but paint forever, 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 or you get something going on, or like your eyesight goes down because you're sitting there painting for such a long time. So this is a very, very important stuff about skills. Like for example, I'm um, working with uh, big, big blocks of clay now, uh, I, will, I will send it in the newsletter. If you guys are getting my newsletter, I, I'll send you some pictures next month. Um, pretty proud. Um, big blocks of clay. So this is like about um, sometimes having a vulnerability or a new potential or just a completely different way that you can be recreated by your art. So for example, you're starting sewing. Your brain kicks in like you will be fully groomed by this. So you, you will have a completely different consciousness. For example, um, you fall in love with somebody really, really bad, not knowing that they have a certain type of disease. And then you will also probably contract that disease. And then this is the, the rest of your life. Be very careful. Also, if you are great, if you, for example, dating many people during this time, and also if you're in the risk zone for certain diseases, so certain uh, transmitted diseases, please be very careful. So at the moment, it's very easy to contract a certain disease and then to have that disease groom you. It's not just having a disease. It will groom you to be somebody. Um, for example, uh, going into theater, having to take on many personalities, having to speak in front of the audience, this will groom you. It's a grooming time. So um, also the best, the better thing is, is preparing you for a certain mark. Also, if we are talking professionalism, Interesting. I've been doing song covers. I've done this uh, cover of a very famous Russian song from a movie, and I actually uh, wrote an email to a performer that sang it back in the 80s, and he replied to me, and he told me I'm not very professional because I got the, ro uh, the wrong words in one part of the song. I can't believe this person replied to me, but he was obviously maybe very professional. He was preparing me for like a bit of professionalism and my journey, which is very interesting. So this is about grooming. It's a bit, it's, it's a bit like um, psychotic, you know. So for example, you know these worlds, like the world of coffee, for example. You can't just make a coffee. If you've ever worked as a barista, um, you would know. You have to make it so good, and you have to make it so professional. You, you got to make a real Italian latte by this point. Um, if you've been noticed, also for example, for any kind of craft um, or any kind of thing. It has to be so good and it has to be so pure. And 
everything that you do has to be within a certain meter. But there is a cause and effect. So for example, standing up all day making coffees is also going to make you a little bit crazy. So you become a representative of a world. Okay, so notice that rabbit is about... Sorry, it's like a long video. Sorry, not sorry, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to help. I also want to know. Uh, so like, for example, um, rabbit... Uh, is about conglomerates, it's about congealing, it's about making friends, it's about uh, word of mouth, it's about influence, it's about this and that. But once sometimes you're in a group with people, that starts to move you. For example, you walked into the modeling business, you're becoming a model. You can't just be a model, you've got to be inside that business. It will start to tell you what to eat, what to wear, how to dress, um, what to say, uh, how to look at people when you talk, how to make a presence. You will not just be you, you will be a part of that machine. It's a big machine. So that's basically what I'm um, trying to also um, get to myself, is recognizing that it's not all bad. You know, if you've ever studied like ballroom dancing, your body is no longer just your body it's the body the body from that world and um, it's also very great it's very healthy it's very sexy for example if you're walking into something exciting like learning how to figure skate like learning how to ballet <laughs> learning how to uh, dance a certain dance learning jiu-jitsu learning if you are really 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 fit and you're real for it if you're real for it, if you have it in you, if you have it in your bones, if you have it in your body, if you've had it in your mind this whole time, if it's natural and it's associative, it is going to take over and you're going to just start to do it within minutes. So that's really interesting for me also. So this is probably the last little part there. We don't have any time. Time is very, very fast during this time. So that's also a thing. Um, learning a skill within uh, a blink of an eye having your body's intelligence kick in and just know what to say, uh, having like the whole world affirm you and confirm you. But please be gentle with yourselves there. So for example, you are now a representative of extreme sport. Understand that, okay? What comes with that ground? Or you are now a mother or a mother-to-be or you are now mm, a sculptor uh, or you are now a poet uh, there are lots of us uh, being slotted into places we don't even yet know that we're in. So we basically have to be kind of like careful and not too bad and try to kind of walk in that world and understand that we're also kind of gentle and still kind of maybe feeling like we're not good enough or I'm not so great at this or will I ever be able to make it in this industry. Um, if you have gotten it, if you have somehow slotted into a world, there is a very big likely chance that you're going to stay there for like a very long time. So uh, also with no due disrespect, certain people that are walking into negative worlds, for example, uh, selling yourself, you know, or doing something very, very mean or very, very disempowering or not caring for yourself or walking into any kind of danger zone, please be careful because this is not just going to be one day. This is not going to be just like, oh, six weeks of just like sitting on my bag and, you know, using people to get across, using people like, I'll just be with this guy for a while and stay at his house and I'm going to go to another guy's house. That kind of thing is very, very hard for me to see. And also we do have a uh, huge crisis of people migrating around the world, as I've already talked about in the yearly report. Um, lots of people running around the world, going from one house to another, one cozy nook to another. If you are still walking around from one cozy nook to another, if you're still also using people, or if people are using you in any way, please understand that there is a lot of shame in that, inevitably. Uh, being kind of like a helpless bystander, being kind of uh, like not really anything in the situation, please understand Feet have to be firmly on the ground. The heart has to be locked and loaded during this time. This is the best, best um, spectrum right now energetically to really get yourself to look at yourself, look at yourself in the eye, uh, see yourself straight, set yourself up, set yourself straight and make it. This is a good time to make it. It is not about making someone make it for you and definitely laziness shows and complacency or lack of self-respect but we have to really uh, get through to you and maybe in some catharsis nature will get through to you. So 
it's a very very important time you guys and i hope you treat it with respect and yes honestly thank you so much for um being a friend of my channel have a look at my patreon have a look and uh, i will be changing it so good time to sign up and uh, as of next month i think i'll change the prices for my patreon and yes if you'd like you can also get a reading with me thank you so much enjoy and i'll see you next time